Mrs. Honeybee. Today, we'll be exploring the world of Lion King. I'm Pumbaa. This is Timon. All you have to do is close your eyes, get cozy, and listen to the sound of my voice. Mrs. Honeybee will be your guide. Repeat after me, kid. Hakuna Matata. Let's begin. It means no worries. Close your eyes and see the world of Lion King. You are in the lush jungle where Timon and Pumbaa live. Only embrace what's next and turn the what into so what. With all the other jungle animals, birds and bugs. Take a deep breath of the misty jungle air in through your nose. Feel the coolness coming in through your nose. When you cannot take in any more air, breathe out all the way through your mouth. All is quiet in the jungle right now. The lions must be sleeping. Look your head all the way to one side. You can see trees with hanging vines and mossy branches stretching up high, but no Timon or Pumbaa. Where are they? Look your head all the way to the other side. There are more trees with a dense curtain of hanging vines that is blocking your view. Put your hand to part the vines like a curtain. Do you see anyone? Bring your head back to center, then look all the way up. Maybe Timon and Pumbaa are in the trees. That's our specialty. Sunbeams are darting through the treetops, but no one is up there. Look your head all the way down to the squishy ground. There's a hollowed out tree log laying beside you. Maybe they're in there. Hmm doesn't look like it. Bring your head back to the center and do one last scan in the quiet jungle. All of a sudden, you hear a faint shout that seems to be getting closer and closer to you, moving quickly. I just feel like it would make me feel better. The shout echoes louder. Oh no, it's a little lion. It's Pumbaa swinging in from a hanging tree vine. That is not a lion. Well, then go check it out. What is that it? That is not a lion. It's a furry bird. He's holding the vine as tight as he can with his hooves as he barrels through the air, swinging down right beside you with a powerful wind gust. Oh, all right, let me see what we're dealing with here. He swings all the way back up the other side, high above the treetops, like a clock pendulum. As he swings up, he shouts, Wee! Then on his way back down, you make eye contact with him. He's heading right towards you, unable to stop. Run for your life, Pumbaa! Right, 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 right before he crashes into you, he lets go of the vine, flails through the air, and lands with a big splash in a nearby pond. Can we please keep him? Oh, Pumbaa oh pokes his warthog head out from the pond and sits upright, soaking wet. He waves hello and trots over next to you. Timon should be flying in any second now. He was a few vines behind me. You hear more shouts swinging down. It's a monkey. He swings right by and launches himself high up into a nearby tree instead of swinging back down. Oh, here comes a fox that swings right by you and launches off to the other side. It sounds like there are more coming. Here comes an antelope holding a mouse and then a zebra. It looks like there's one more coming. It's a baby elephant with her trunk wrapped tightly around the vine to hold on. She launches off the vine after she swings by you and lands in another pond with an even bigger splash than Pumbaa. Here comes someone else, 
the last one. And it looks like this one is tiny with floppy ears and a long tail. It's Timon. He swings down, 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 right by you with a tiny gust of wind. He lets go just in time to do a somersault in the air and lands with two feet softly on Pumbaa's head with his hands up. Then he says, Ta-da! Sorry I'm late. Traffic was terrible today. Timon and Pumbaa traveled all the way through the jungle to see you and are so happy you are here. Mama, can we keep him? Yes, of course we can keep Timon him. Timon hops down off of Pumbaa's head toward the fallen tree log that has tall grass growing up around either side. He reaches his tiny hands under the log and tries with all his might to roll it up off the ground. Who is the brains of this operation? It barely budges, but moves just enough for him to yank up a fluffy dandelion flower from the ground. He studies it for a moment, then calls you and Pumbaa over to help roll the log. The three of you wedge your hands under the log and each take a big breath in through your nose. When you breathe out through your mouth, roll the log forward with all of your might next to Pumbaa and Tiny Timon. Dandelion fluff flies all around the tree log as it rolls over to reveal piles of slithering, scurrying, rainbow-colored bugs of all shapes and sizes. Timon and Pumbaa are giddy at the feast before them. They inspect the grub by holding them up before swallowing them whole. The baby elephant that landed in the pond saunters slowly by, takes one look at all the creepy crawlies and says, Ew, how can you eat those? Timon gulps down a big blue bug and says, Like that. Pumbaa sits back and wonders for a moment, then says, have you ever thought about what it would be like to be a bug? The baby elephant slowly walks away without answering. But you and Timon wonder, Hmm, what do you think it would be like to be a bug? Pumbaa leans his snout down to a brown slug, nearly crossing his eyes to focus on it in front of his face and says, Bugs don't have warthog tusks. I wonder how they dig or ram into things. Timon wonders too. So he grabs another dandelion from under the log and says, let's find out with a wish. He holds it out for all of you to make a wish on. When the world turns its back on you, you turn your back on the world. Take a big breath in of the sweet smelling flower through your nose with Timon and Pumbaa. Then when you breathe out, dandelion fluff falls all around and now you're a teeny tiny creepy crawling bug. What kind of bug are you? What color? Timon turned into a bright green beetle with shimmering wings that he attempts to use for the first time and fails. How are you in as few words as possible? Timon turned into a bright green beetle with shimmering wings that he attempts to use for the first time and fails. He leaps up into the air flutters frantically, then drops back down under the log. You look all around for Pumbaa. He turned into the slug he was admiring and is chomping away on the leaf that he's crawling on. He looks up with his two slug antennae, flopping forward and back like ears and says, Only embrace what's next and turn the what into so what. Make your way over to Pumbaa, who is still munching on his dandelion leaf. Timon is here now, too. He finally figured out how to use his beetle wings and landed on the dandelion. Uh-oh. 
Here comes another meerkat warhog duo. They stuck up right behind you. They're going to try to eat you up as a scrumptious bug. Timon says, hurry, I know how to be a meerkat. Let's be meerkats now. Take another big breath in through your nose. And when you breathe out through your mouth, make your wish into the dandelion with Timon and Pumbaa. Dandelion fluff falls all around and now you're all three little mousy meerkats like Timon. In a row, Timon, Pumbaa, then you all stand up on your back paws one by one like the meerkats you are. Hakuna Matata. You curl your tiny front paws in towards your belly. When you're standing up tall as a meerkat, Make sure your neck and spine are as straight as possible and that your floppy ears are as far away from your teeny shoulders as possible. Look in one direction as far as you can. Then in the opposite direction as far as you can. You are just tall enough to see over the jungle grass so duck down to make sure there aren't any predators looking to chase a meerkat. Timon scurries off and wants you and Pumbaa to follow him. He knows a fun meerkat hangout spot that you'll all enjoy. Running through the grass on the soft ground beneath, you feel your small feet leave small footprints as you move as fast as you can after Timon. When you finally stop, Timon points down to a hole in the ground and says, This is the best spot in the whole Lion Kingdom. To you, as a new meerkat, it just looks like a hole in the ground. You and Pumbaa sit back upright and wrap your tails around your bodies like a blanket. Pumbaa starts playing with his own tail circling around himself completely, unaware of anything else. He circles himself right up to the paws of four hyenas standing in a line licking their chops, about to have a meerkat dinner. Pumba runs as fast as he can, grabs your meerkat paw, and you all hop to safety in the meerkat tunnel. It's almost completely dark down in the tunnels, but as a meerkat, your eyes adjust. You have night vision. You run, run, run through the tunnels, down far beneath the grassy surface. Without the warm jungle sun, you feel chilly air blow through your fur. Your whiskers tickle against the narrow sides of the tunnel. Timon leads you and Pumbaa as meerkats to the very bottom of the tunnel, which opens up into a relaxing, peaceful burrow. Some meerkats are snoozing in piles, while others are carefully arranging ants on a piece of a log for lunch. It's so peaceful down here. Timon leads you further into the meerkat burrow, where there are several comfy nests of leaves and feathers. You all rest there for a bit and watch a few really active meerkats dig into the dirt walls. Reach behind you in your comfy nest and dig into the dirt with your meerkat paws. The dirt feels cool to the touch. Timon sees you digging, so he starts to help and says, Meerkats are always working on making more entrances and exits because you never know when an eagle or a hyena will spot you. You help out the meerkat colony by digging a new exit all the way back up to the surface. Right paw scoops out dirt, then left paw, right paw, then left paw. Slowly but surely, you're back to the sunny surface, peeking your head out of the tunnel. Timon and Pumbaa squish in on either side of you 
to peek their heads out too. Timon pulls out another dandelion and asks, So what do you want to be next? Pumbaa shouts, A warthog! Timon holds the dandelion out for all of you to make a wish on. Take another big breath in through your nose. And when you breathe out through your mouth, Make your wish with Timon and Pumbaa. Dandelion fluff falls all around, and now all three stinky warthogs with big bellies, protruding tusks, and little tufts of black hair on the top of your head that blows in the breeze. Pumbaa is so excited to be a warthog again. He looks back at you and Timon, who are adjusting to life with tusks and hooves. Put your floppy warthog ear down to your shoulder and stick one of your tusks high up into the air. Then do the other side. You dig a little hole and find some water just beneath the surface. Pumbaa jumps up and twirls all around and says, This is the best part of being a warthog. Mud puddles. The three of you dig and dig with your tusks. Right tusk, left tusk, right tusk, left tusk, until you have a huge mud puddle big enough for all three of you as warthogs to roll around in. Pumbaa backs up with quick little steps, then runs as fast as he can to jump into the mud puddle like a pool. You and Timon do the same back up with your warthog hooves. Once you're far enough away, gallop with Timon until you get close to the muddy puddle. Then jump as high as you can and land in the oozy mud that splashes and splatters all over you. Pumbaa is belly up, nearly asleep in the sun by now. So you do the same. The mud keeps part of you cool while the sunshine warms up your belly. It's kind of nice being a warthog. So you relax here for a little bit, watching all of the birds who are no longer your predators fly in the clear blue sky. That's when you see a bird you recognize. It's a zoo, Simba's trusted dodo guardian. Zazu lands on your warthog snout. He recognizes Pumbaa, but not you or Timon as warthogs. Yes, sire. <clears throat> Pumbaa says hi. I'm Pumbaa. This is Timon. And explains that you're here visiting to experience what it's like to be each of the animals that live in the Lion Kingdom. And that's Timon. Zazu is a bit confused at first, but then says, Well, if you want a premium Lion Kingdom experience, you must spend some time as a dodo. Dodos are by far the best. Timon rolls his warthog eyes, but does admit being a bird sounds kind of fun. He gallops away momentarily to sniff out a dandelion. Zazu explains that he is Simba's trusted guardian because he has a bird's eye view of the entire kingdom and can see everything that's going on from way up high. Listening intently as Zazu continues on and on, Pumbaa interrupts to say, Did you see that? Zazu finally stops talking to say, Wah, but before he can finish, Timon charges him with his warthog tusks and tosses him straight up into the air. <laughs> Zazu shrieks and feathers fly everywhere. Timon holds the dandelion out for all of you to make a wish on. Take another big breath in through your nose. And when you breathe out through your mouth, make your wish with Timon and Pumbaa. Dandelion fluff falls all around, and now you're all three dodos, just like Zazu. Zazu continues on talking, 
but you can hardly pay attention because you have wings where your arms used to be. Stretch your wings out to each side as strong as you can. Then flap them and fly up, up, up high into the sky along with Timon, Pumbaa, and Zazu, who is still chatting away about how cool it is to be a dodo. Birds usually fly in V-shapes, so you take the lead at the point of the V. You are high above the Lion Kingdom. What was once so big when you were a creepy crawling bug is now tiny as a soaring bird. You can see elephants, zebras, and sure enough, there are all the lions. Zazu spirals down to check in on Simba, as is his duty. Following Zazu by spiraling down closer to the ground, then land gently on Simba's head. Once you land, shake your tail feathers out a little bit, because that was a long flight. Simba laughs and asks, Who's on my head? It's me, Simba! Oh. <laughs> Zazu explains that it's you, and that you are on a wild ride through the Lion Kingdom with Timon and Pumbaa. Simba smiles big and says, Well then, you must be a lion. I'm gonna be the king of Pride Rock. Zazu asks if you're sure you don't want to stay a dodo, and you're sure that you definitely want to be a lion with Simba and Nala. From up on Simba's head, you look all the way from one side to the other in search of another dandelion. You spot one nearby and direct Simba to it. Flap your wings one last time to get down off Simba's head. Then take a big breath in through your beak and back out through your beak to turn into a lion. Once again, dandelion fluff falls all around and then you pounce onto the ground with four big lion paws ready to play. Simba and Nala pounce too and face off with you, Timon and Pumbaa. My dad showed me the whole kingdom and said I'm going to rule it all. Then at the same time, all of you look over at Zazu who is still talking about how cool dodos are. So you decide to be sneaky lions and creep up on him. Simba leads the way and you all follow. You get really low to the ground. Below the tips of the grass, you once looked over as a meerkat and stealthily walk step by step behind Simba. When Simba gets to Zazu, he wiggle, wiggle, wiggles, then roars and jumps up to pounce on unsuspecting Zazu. Right before Simba swipes him with his paw, Zazu weaves and flaps his wings to hover over Simba, who keeps trying to playfully swipe by standing on his hind legs. You and Nala join in and try to get Zazu. Reach your big lion paw high into the sky with your dagger claws out and try to get him. You swipe your right paw, but Zazu ducks. Then you swipe your left paw, and Zazu hops over it in midair. He's had enough lion antics for the day, so he flies away still claiming that the dodo is the best animal in the lion kingdom. Then all of a sudden Pumbaa tackles you and forms a lion pile with Timon pouncing on, then Simba, then Nala. That would be so proud, huh? You all roll around in the grass and play as lion cubs. Then you stop suddenly because Simba's mom is going to meet up with other lionesses. You decide to follow along to see what lionesses do with their days. Nala races you as you run alongside the lionesses but you are too fast and win. Everyone stops behind a tree with extra tall grass and they all lay down low. You, Timon and Pumbaa, are distracted by yet another dandelion 
growing out of the grass where the lionesses are crouching down low. Timon picks it and looks around to see what animal you all should be next. Pumbaa looks around too and sees a herd of zebras just across the way under a big tree with long, extended, horizontal branches. Then Pumbaa says, I think I'd look good in stripes. Let's be zebras. Timon holds the dandelion out for all of you to make a wish. Take another big breath in through your nose. And when you breathe out through your mouth, make your wish with Timon and Pumbaa. Dandelion fluff falls all around, and now you're all three stripy zebras. You are much taller than when you were a lion, and now you can stand on your hind legs and be even taller. Raise up your front hooves and zebra dance with Timon and Pumbaa to celebrate being zebras. From the grass, Simba and Nala shush you and beg you to hide in the grass but none of you are paying attention. Timon tries to balance on just one of his back hooves and topples over. Then you hear Simba shout, run! And you see the group of lionesses sneaking up on you as a zebra. You, Timon and Pumbaa, take off and gallop as fast as you can. The lionesses are right behind you, running as fast as they can. Simba and Nala are trying to distract them, but they're completely focused. Timon and Pumbaa know of a canyon with a bunch of hiding spots, so you turn and head for it, still running as fast as you can. You look back and the lionesses are starting to get tired, so they're further back now. Keep going. Simba and Nala disappear behind you while you're following Timon and Pumbaa into the canyon where you see herds of zebras and antelopes grazing. Then, suddenly, they look up from their chewing when they hear your hooves echo through the canyon and take off running in front of you. You are a part of a stampede now and everyone is trying to escape the lionesses. You, Timon and Pumbaa, weave into the middle of the herd and realize everyone's hooves are moving in unison as if you are one giant animal moving swiftly through the canyon. You feel incredibly powerful and fast, faster than you've ever felt before as a human. You make it out of the herd, safely away from the lions and catch your breath under the shade of the tree with long horizontal branches. Simba and Nala took a shortcut and are now running up to join. They successfully distracted the lionesses away from you so you can relax peacefully now. As you are sprawled out in the cool shade nuzzling the soft grass with your zebra nose, you hear from above you. It's Rafiki hanging out in the tree. He's holding a dandelion out and asks, Do you want to be a monkey with me? Timon and Pumbaa jump up and beg to be a meerkat and a warthog again. They cannot take all of this action. Rafiki slowly makes his way down the tree and holds the dandelion out for all of you to make a wish. Take another big breath in through your nose and when you breathe out through your mouth, make your wish with Timon, Pumbaa, and Rafiki. Dandelion fluff falls all around, and now you're a monkey just like Rafiki. Timon and Pumbaa are back to being themselves, and Simba and Nala are perfectly content staying lions. Rafiki jumps from the ground all the way to a high branch up in the tree. As a monkey, you can follow him. Jump as high as you can and grab hold of a branch, then pull yourself up to balance on the branch. Rafiki hands you a walking stick with little shakers on it, just like his, in case you need it. 
You rest it against the tree trunk and play in the branches, rustling the leaves all around. You curl your monkey tail around and around the branch, then fall backward with your hands out to the sides. Your tail catches you effortlessly and you hang upside down, gently swaying by your tail from the tall tree. This may be the coolest view of the Lion Kingdom yet, upside down. Timon, Pumbaa, Simba, and Nala all wave to you upside as you enjoy the breeze. Rafiki grabs your walking stick and jumps down. You hop down to follow him and grab hold of your walking stick. Together, you and Rafiki lead the pack of friends through the savanna as the sun sets. Your stick and Rafiki's walking stick shake like maracas during the peaceful walk. The sky looks like it's painted with blues, purples, and pinks. Puffy white clouds move slowly through as if they're following you on your walk. You don't even notice where you're going until you end up at the elephant graveyard after the sun completely sets. Rafiki leads you to a plateau where you can get a view of all the bones. He says, look up. Above you, there are millions and millions of twinkling stars. The nighttime is warm here, so you all lay down to enjoy stargazing. Rafiki has a surprise for you. He hands you one last dandelion. That's all yours. The rest of your Lion King friends have fallen asleep. Before you drift off to your own dreams, take one last breath in through your monkey nose when you breathe out through your mouth, make your very own special wish now that you know that you can be anything you wish to be. If you enjoy my stories, consider becoming a member of the Honey Bee Library. Being a Honey Bee Library member gives you access to hundreds of exclusive bedtime stories not available on my podcast. The Honey Bee Library has hundreds of bedtime stories, just like this one, with new stories added every Sunday. See the description below to become a member of the Honey Bee Library. Always remember that Mrs. Honey Bee believes in you. You are special and you are loved. I can't wait to see you again.